Welcome to Fishing with Steve D and in today's video we're going to be showing you how to make a bait feeder or bait container really really easy and we're starting right now. Welcome to my messy kitchen and there's my cup of coffee and why I'm in the kitchen guys is I'm going to show you I'm just going to grab this bottle here so this is just a normal bottle of mayonnaise and what we're going to do so what we're going to do, we're going to take this bottle um, of mayonnaise and we're just going to unscrew the top here and um, yeah so these are really good bait containers guys I'm going to show you how to put the holes in them but basically you see this nozzle here we just wash out all the contents uh, that is nearly empty so you just put your dried um, dog biscuits or dried cat food whichever one you use into here and then it's as simple as uh, screwing on the lid again and happy day so I'm just gonna wash it out and give it a good clean and we'll go outside and I'll show you how to uh, put the holes in really easy guys welcome to fishing with Steve D well guys I've just had very new updated information that there are going to be major changes in the red claw fishing in Queensland. Now these changes I will be breaking it all down in the following videos that come after this video. We're going to be breaking it down, we're going to be talking about what's changed. So stay tuned for those uh, videos. The pages you need to know about is obviously the Queensland Fisheries website and Facebook page and this one NQ Red Claw Yabbies Australia now if you're not a member of this NQ Red Claw Yabbies Australia page do yourselves a favor and join guys because you'll learn everything to do with Red Clawing will be on this group so do yourselves a favor check it out and join okay guys so I've got my soldering iron so guys once you turn your soldering iron on, it's just a matter of holding it there and until it burns. There it goes, it's burning a hole slowly in it. Simple as that. So that's burning. Let's burn another one in there. Once it gets through the paper, it'll go straight through the plastic. And there you have an easy way of putting holes in your container now I'll put one on the corner here and I'll just turn it up like this and put one here because that's where we're going to put the cable tie and the cable tie now this is getting really hot so it's really going through like butter now and that's what you want so we're doing this outside guys because as you can see there's a lot of smoke coming off and you don't want to breathe this in so we have to do it outside not inside so there we go there's another hole so that's how easy it is to burn holes with a soldering iron into your bait containers and it's so so easy to do so there you go just a matter of going through doing all four sides the more holes you've got the better the bait will disperse and you'll catch a lot more red claw in doing that so that's how easy it is guys to burn holes into a container your mayonnaise container container that you use and uh, simple as that guys so I'm just going to show you how to put this cable tie on now but we're really really burning these holes in really quickly now as you can see once the soldering iron gets hot it really is really really simple and really really easy to do so turn it up there same thing there just put a couple in the side here now there's a lot of smoke coming off this so like I said before we need to be outside in the fresh air so that that smoke can disperse not to do it inside guys because if you do it inside you don't want to breathe it in because it's definitely not healthy okay so here we have all the sides that are all holes have been burnt in with a soldering iron 
but I'll just show you here. I've done a couple holes on the end because we want to put this cable tie in there. So that cable tie stays in here permanently. So I just trim off the tag end. And when I put it into the uh, pots, we just get another cable tie and we cut that one on and off. But we leave this cable tie always on the bait feeder or the bait container. So that's how easy it is to make and burn holes simply out of a bottle, uh, mayonnaise bottle. You can use any types of bottles. Um, and as long as you've got a lid that unscrews like that, you put your dried cat food or your dried dog biscuits in there screw it back on and you're ready to go. Now you can use ice, coffee or uh, any any containers at all. So um, just put on a nice cable tie, strong cable tie and leave that one on always and put a second cable tie around the frame of the pot and cut that one off and on. So I've got to thank Gavin for this idea because this is really works well because what happens, it moves around a lot uh, when the red claw move all over it and walk all over it and it disperses more burly so it'll catch you more red claw guys so it's a really really good tip thanks Gav for the tip I've just done it a little bit differently with the hot soldering iron um, there's there's other ways you can burn them in with a tent peg and gas torch if you got that as well there's a few different ways but I'll just use a soldering iron because it's really really simple you just buy the soldering iron from the uh, hardware store and it's really really easy and simple so there's one bait container, bait feeder, homemade, it's going to save you a bit of dough guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Well guys, I really hope you liked and enjoyed that video on how easy it is to burn holes into just a bottle that you have in your cupboards in your kitchen at home. Empty bottles, reuse them and save a bit of dough. And that's how easy it is to burn holes and make a bait feeder with a cable tie on the end. And I hope you really enjoyed this video, guys. Please smash that like button and subscribe button. Until next time, God bless. Cooey! I call it a beauty! Welcome to Fishing with Steve D. And today we're going to talk about the best five baits to use for red claw fishing. And we're starting right now. Well, today we're talking about the best five baits for red claw fishing, freshwater crayfish fishing. And number five is watermelon skins. Now, people say that the Red Claw are vegetarians, but I can tell you they are scavengers. I've seen them devour catfish totally down to the skeleton. So I do tell you from experience, they like eating meat as well, and they are scavengers. But watermelon skins, try that. Cut it up, put it in your bait containers, and happy days. Number four is cat food cat food now I can tell you I've heard a lot of people talking about cat food really catches the big uh, the bigger red claw especially when it's amongst the sticks and timber up at Somerset Dam I've heard of a lot of uh, locals getting that uh, bigger red claw uh, using catfish uh, using cat food but be careful of turtles if you're if it's in the rivers be careful of catfish of um, of uh, turtles sorry and um, but in the dams are okay okay number three is rock melon rock melon is very very popular with a lot of anglers and it works really 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 well so that's number three best baits for red claw freshwater crayfish okay number two is par cooked sweet potato or half cooked sweet potato and that leaves us down to number one best bait for red claw freshwater crayfish fishing and it is the good old dog biscuits now the good old dog biscuits um, you can buy them they're pretty cheap about five or six bucks in the shop but the beauty about dog biscuits it lasts three to five days so you can leave your pots in longer whereas if you're using vegetables you have to do it like the same day or the same weekend so here there you go guys the best red claw freshwater crayfish baits number five watermelon skins number four cat food number three rock melon number two sweet potatoes par cooked half cooked and number one is the good old dog biscuits Hi guys, welcome to Fisherman Steve D. Well, we're going to get, uh, okay. check some uh, red claw pots today, so we're just going to leave the camera roll and uh, get some footage of that. Talk about how we're doing it. So, um, 
Mark here has just pulled one up. So, yeah. How's that? Hopefully this will be money, honey. The one. This one straight in here, Ray. Feels heavy. Oh yes. Have a look at that, it's folks. One of the one with the fish in it. It's one of the one with the fish in it. That's what we want. Full of a red claw. Here we go, folks. If you grab them by the back of the head, there they can't nip you. He's trying. He's trying to nip you, but. Uh... Welcome to Fishing with Steve D. Well, today I have got some very, very important news major major changes in red claw fishing in queensland and we're going to be breaking it right down in this video right now here we go folks a few more flippers getting a bit bigger that's a that's great let's get a few more okay so here we have the old natural waters uh, diagram and as you can see it's up the top of end of Queensland into Weeper extending through to the Gulf of Carpentaria. Now if you have a look at the new map now what you'll find in the new map basically the whole east coast has now on the western side of the range Great Dividing Range is natural so there will be a bag limit of 40 red claw per person in your possession at any one time. Females carrying eggs in natural waters must be returned back to the water. On the eastern side it is illegal to put any red claw back into the water, period. On the eastern side of the Great Dividing Range and uh, on that right hand side you'll see there's no bag limit and um, it's quite um, obvious there sort of uh, but the biggie the big rule change is the entrances on the traps on the eastern side you cannot use any traps in the rivers unless they are five centimeters um, now if you're fishing in the lakes and the impoundments and the dams you can use between five and ten centimeter ring entrances in the traps that is the big rule change with these new rules now that has to do everything with the platypus on the eastern side of the Great Dividing Range. I'm guessing there's a lot more platypus in the rivers so this makes good sense to uh, keep the smaller entrances of five centimeters. And if you have a look at the top right corner you'll see all the lakes and dams and all the impoundments that you're allowed to use uh, traps with a maximum of four entrances so if you've got any more than four entrances you can't use them and uh, they must have between five centimeters and up to ten centimeters in the lakes dams impoundments only now again I will repeat if you are fishing the river system you need to have a pot that has a five centimeter no bigger than five centimeter entrances in the rings that is the biggie in the new rule changes so let's have a look at these pots uh, that we're doing now fisheries have had a look at these up in townsville and they have commented they are very good strong and uh, pots and they really did like the construction they could see that they're well made um, and you can continue to use these pots that we do um, in the lakes and empowerments which 99% of people who are red chlorine will be in lakes 
dams and impoundments. However, the big thing that you will need to take notice of is if you're going to be using these in rivers, uh, particularly any rivers on the east side, you're going to need to have the smaller 5 centimeter rings in these pots. Now, I'm going to look into making a few with the smaller 5 centimeter rings so we can cater for both markets. So stay tuned for that guys, that may take a little time to do, um, but I'm going to look into that. Also with these pots, you don't have to have your street number on there. Just put on your surname, street name and suburb. On the fixed end of the float, surname only on a tag. On the float, same as the pot. Okay, so this is how flat they are. They are fully collapsible and they are so flat. So you can stack um, four of them on top of each other. You're allowed four of these pots per person. Well, just pulled the pot out, and she is absolutely loaded. It is chockers. These pots certainly do the trick. There would have to be over a hundred in that pot, without a doubt. And there's some big ones in there too. So there's a nipper on that one. I'm guessing probably 150, 200 in there. There's a big fella here. Hey, well, that pot does the trick, mate. Look at that, the bottom is just black from red claw. That is cool. All right, I'm going home and count them. Strong rings, good aluminium struts, so they're definitely worth. Um, the extra money because they'll last a lifetime guys uh, now these rings are facing upwards so that when the red claw walks in them um, they fall in and they can't get back out because the rings are upwards and that's a very very important feature there um, and uh, yeah I don't think you need uh, to put gutter guard on these because they walk straight in there they're so mesh is so taut and so good so there we have it guys Okay, so here's the hook here. So we just unclip that and that comes out. And what that does, that opens it up. Okay guys, that's what it's like when it's all uh, put up nice and sturdy. They walk up the entrances here. The rings are facing up, so when they fall in, they can't go back out again. Very important that those rings are folded up or facing up and very very strong rope tie it on there you with your boy six inch float you got to have a six inch float on it and uh but if you're on the bank just put them on the base because then uh, the rope will pull it in properly if you put it up the top it'll actually um go like that and uh get fouled up if it goes uh, on an angle uh, you don't want to get snagged so that's a good tip is to if you're off the bank put on the rope on the bottom if you're in the boat tie it up here um, so it pulls it up straight up like that so uh, really really good strong aluminium struts um, totally collapsible flat as now guys I've got to talk to you about uh, somebody said it doesn't matter how many red claw if they're in pr plague proportions it doesn't matter what trap you're going to use well sorry I'm not going to mention the guy who said this comment but he's incorrect you don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize that these have got four entrances not two so they've got double double the entrances so you work it out you don't have to be a rocket scientist to realize that these have got double the entrances, twice as many uh, entrances. And what we're finding, wait till you have a look at this footage that I'm gonna to put towards the end of the video. You'll see how well they work. Um, they are catching at least double or not, if not more than the cheap pots. So they are well worth the extra investment. They're um, extra heavy duty.
Well guys, if you're not a member of NQ Red Claw Yabbies Australia Facebook page, do yourselves a favor and check it out guys because you will learn everything there is about red claw fishing or yabbies. Anything to do with yabbies will be also on this page because it's an Australia wide page and it's got so much information guys. So check it out, NQ Red Claw Yabbies Australia Facebook page. Do yourselves a favor and check it out and join today. Oh, just pulled the pot out. The sheet is absolutely loaded. It is chockers. These pots certainly do the trick. There would have to be over a hundred in that pot. Without a doubt. And there's some big ones in there too. So there's a nipper on that one. I'm guessing we 150, 200 in there. There's a big fella here. Hey. Well that pot does the trick mate. Look at that, the bottom is just black from red claw. That is cool. Alright, go home and count them. Well guys, I hope you really liked that video about the major, major changes in the rules for red claw fishing in Queensland. Now, do yourselves a favour, jump on the Fisheries Queensland website and Facebook page and get familiar with what I've just spoken about and uh, the new rules in your area because different areas are gonna change. So make sure you are up to date with the latest rule changes uh, in your area and your district. I'm Fisherman Steve D, until next time, God bless.